Welcome to our studios where in this video we'll show you what it's like to set up and shoot tethered and we'll be using the EOS Utility 3. We'll show you how you can adjust settings and take pictures and video right from your computer screen. We'll go through most of the basics that you need to know about and we'll wrap up by touching on wireless computer controlled shooting. So let's get started here on the computer. First of all, you can see that my camera is connected. We have the EOS Utility 3 already launched. And in the earlier video, we've been through the other two options. So we're going to click right on the middle and jump straight to remote shooting. What that does is it brings up this control panel. And you'll recognize that an awful lot of the settings over here are consistent with what you see on the camera itself. One of them is grayed out, though. And I want to point out that you see the manual shooting mode is grayed out. That's because it can't be changed from this interface. There are some things that you actually have to go to the camera and adjust there directly. Not many, but the shooting mode is one of those things. Of course, the exception to that rule is the 1DX because it doesn't have a mode dial. It actually can be remotely changed electronically. Based on the manual shooting mode, you can see that my camera right now is set to shoot an exposure at 1 60th of a second at f4 for the aperture. And if you click on any of these that have the black, the dark black rather than the grayed out text, you can adjust these right here on screen. Now before I go too far through all of the options here, I want to show you something really important and the thing that makes this such a great way to shoot. And that's live view shooting. So we're going to click on live view shoot here at the bottom of the panel. And you can see it brings up a full screen and you can see my model is ready to go. Hi Kim. And uh, what we have on this screen is a live preview. And this is actually the focus area. So we can click, hold, and drag to move our area of focus. You can also see there are some additional controls on the right side of this panel. Now, these are controls that some of them are actually replicating what's over here in the control panel. So you can make those adjustments either place. What I like to do is I like to close this panel up so that I get a nice big preview. So just click there and you get a nice big preview of what your final image is going to look like. This is the focus area, but the camera isn't focused. It looks as though it's close to focused, but it's not exactly focused. So the way that you do that is just double click any particular place on screen. So let me click, hold and drag and move this just a little bit. And I'm going to double click on her eye. And that way, it puts the camera into the mode where the lens actually captures focus. And now you see this green box. That means that it captured a good focus. And although you couldn't hear it, it was very faint, I'm sure, the uh, camera actually did make its confirmation beep. Now, if you'd like to look very closely in this area, you can zoom in to five times or 10 times magnification. This is a temporary digital magnification. It does not affect your final image. But those controls are at the lower right. So click here. And you can see that's five times magnification. And you can see how nice and sharp the focus is right on her eyes. And that makes for a great portrait. We can even go closer. 10 times digital zoom. And it's nice and sharp. So going back to our original view, so we've already captured focus. We're about ready to shoot. And as soon as we do, we're going to trigger the editing software, DPP4, Digital Photo Professional 4. It automatically launches because it's already tied to our EOS Utility. Of course, my setup is that EOS Utility 3 is linked to Digital Photo Professional 4. But if you wanted to have some other editing software like Lightroom or Photoshop, you could do that. You'd just go into the preferences of EOS Utility 3 and in that drop down menu, just choose the linked software option and choose that alternate application. And that way, the other program is linked to your copy of EOS Utility 3. So there we have it. It's captured the image. It launches the DPP4 software. And you can see that's ready to edit. It came into that interface right away. Now, this video isn't about how to use that. We have a separate video series on how to use DPP4. So we'll tuck this away behind our live view. There we go. And we're back to the live view. Now, there's one other window that showed up, and it's the preview window. The reason this preview window is so great is you don't have to be shooting live view. You can, 
just like we are here, you can shoot Live View to shoot tethered. But you can also turn off Live View and still shoot tethered and see those images show up in preview. You can use this if, for example, you have an art director on set and the art director just wants to see the finished images. So let's do that now. We're going to turn off Live View by going to the Remote Live View window and click the Close button at the bottom right. Live View is now turned off. The camera's still active. It's still attached to our EOS utility. So now I'm going to go grab the camera and we're going to shoot live this way like we normally do. I have constant light set up here. You might be working with flash units. None of that matters. A couple other things though that I want to point out here. We are tethered with the standard USB cable. Some EOS equipped cameras have special configurations so that they hold this connection while you're shooting because you might have a tendency to uh, yank that out of there. You'll also maybe notice that I taped it down on the desk so I don't accidentally pull it out of the computer on the other end. So on this end, since I don't have something like that or an aftermarket jerk stop tool, I usually hook the cable that way so that I don't accidentally pull on this connection. And that way I can work with the camera the way that I'm used to. Give myself a little bit of slack. There we go. Hi, Kim. Thank you so much for helping us out today. There we go, and that's beautiful. And all these shots that I'm taking automatically show up right away on the computer. And they're showing up in the preview, so that way they're not in the DPP-4 editing tool. Okay, let's remount this and get back to our software. All right, so back on the computer you can see these preview shots show up automatically. And this is a great way to work with an art director who's maybe looking at the computer. And you can even make these full screen and hide the uh, camera controls over here on the right. Okay, going back to live view shooting, we'll click here and launch the live view preview window. And you'll see that the camera is set for when I was hand holding it. And you can see the focus is off a little bit and so is the framing. So one of the other things that you have to do manually on the camera is you actually have to do your zooming manually. That's something else you can't do remotely. There we go. So we've reset the framing and we'll go back to our computer and we can control the focus by double clicking in the focus area and the camera grabs focus. All right, just a couple other things. I would like to go through some of these settings and show you some of the things that you can change. You can change the lighting. Where we are right now, we're using some constant lights and you can change the white balance to auto white balance. Now, that's a little blue. It is very accurate, but I like portraits to be just a little warmer, so I chose fluorescent. I think it looks a little bit better that way. And of course, you can also adjust these slightly in post-processing using DPP-4 or your choice of post-processing software like Photoshop or Lightroom. So you can change the lighting this way. But remember that panel we tucked away just a minute ago? Let's go back there. I want to show you how you can adjust the white balance manually. Let's go to custom white balance and then taking the eyedropper tool, click OK and then just click on something that you know is gray or white and it will adjust properly for you. So that's accurate color. I still like the look of the fluorescent though. It has a slight warmness to it, and when I'm doing portraits, I like a little bit more warmth in the image, so that's why I have that with a bit of an orange cast or a little bit of a warmth. Let's go to the drive mode. You can change the drive mode from single shot to continuous or the quiet mode or quiet continuous, and of course, you have the timers available. So you can choose evaluative metering or center weighted or spot metering. So we'll leave it on evaluative for, for now. This is the ISO speed. You can have it set on auto ISO for this particular camera or any of these other values. But for the lighting that we have in the studio here, ISO 800 seems to work best. You can change your image quality mindset right now to camera raw plus a large high resolution JPEG. 
And then you can also decide whether you would like the images to go straight down to your computer like you saw that they do, and to the memory card, that's what's set up here, or you could have it go just to the computer, and that way it wouldn't go onto the memory card. Click OK, and you can see your change is reflected here. One of the nice things that you can do remotely also, besides shooting the still shots, which is what we've been doing so far, is you can trigger video remotely. Now you would do that by clicking here on the video camera, and as soon as you do that, it's in video record mode, but it's not recording yet. You have to go to the lower left, and you see where that video record button is, click on that. Now you're recording, and you actually see the counter, and you see the red record spot. When you're done recording, hit that same button one more time, and it's recorded a movie. Now here's the only thing. It always saves videos to the memory card on the camera, but it doesn't download them automatically. You can choose later whether or not you'd like to download those videos, and in fact, let's go ahead and put away this screen. So I'll choose Close. And you see this dialog box? It actually is asking you the question, do you want to download the video that you just recorded? You have the option to do that now by clicking the download, or you can simply click Cancel and do it at a later time. In the bottom of the control panel here, you also have access to some shooting menu options like picture style. You have access to flash adjustments if you have a flash attached to your camera, which I don't at this point. And you also have access to setup menu items regarding the live view. When you're done working with the live view setup, if you want to close the preview window, the live view preview, click the close button and you're back to seeing the previews of the shots we took just a moment ago. When you're ready to go back to the EOS utility itself, click on the main window button at the bottom right of the control panel, and it goes right back to the EOS utility itself. Now, if your camera has built-in Wi-Fi, like the 6D I'm using, it's very easy to use this software and set it up so that you've got a wireless connection. In this case, I've set up an ad hoc network. How you set up and connect with your camera using Wi-Fi is going to vary. It's very different, and in fact, there's a whole manual Canon has put together, so you can look that up in the manual, get the Wi-Fi connection in place. Once it's in place, many of the same functions are still available. So let's have a look on the computer at some of the Wi-Fi functionality. Again, you can go back to remote shooting, and you can see the same control panel that we had before is still available. Most of the same settings are controllable remotely even when you're wireless. But there's one thing that's missing, and I want you to look to the right of the Live View Shoot button. There is no longer a video button. That's because you can't trigger remote video shooting. From the Live View Shoot, when you click on that, you'll notice that the Live View Shoot still looks the same. But you might notice that the video feed is actually a little bit jumpier. It's going to depend on the camera that you're using and the wireless connection setup that you have. But there's a little bit of jumpiness, a little bit of additional jumpiness to this setup. Other than that, Wi-Fi works just the same as the wired setup that we had going earlier. So that wraps up our series on the Canon EOS Utility 3 and how to use it for remote shooting, both wired and wirelessly. You know, it's a nice bonus that comes along with your Canon DSLR purchase. I'm Larry Becker. Thanks for watching.